Yamin, a climate change lawyer, is arrested after gluing herself to Shell headquarters. Why didn't I do this a long time ago? Disruption. That's the key thing. Joining XR was feeling for the first time like anything was possible. Code section 14, please. No protests allowed. The government's bill says that those who cause annoyance could be jailed for up to 10 years. It's expanding police powers, it's politicised protests, really a silencing bill. The relationships outside of your work life are failing. Realising the potential that a movement like XR has, despite its many imperfections, we are in rebellion. Just that is hella powerful. Nice to meet you both, really. Yeah, thank you for having us. Oh, well, my pleasure to uh, do what I can. It's such a great film, documentary, and um, as congratulations that you're the opening night film for the Human Rights Watch Film Festival. Yes, by the way, I'm sorry, we began. I'm terrible. I, <laughs> it's the most common question directed back at me is, have, have we started? Because I, I got confused. <laughs> I felt I, like I, we were putting on the radio voice. Yeah, there's no radio, even though I do work in a radio station, I, I, there is no, I don't do a radio voice. We're, we're sort of the radio station in the upstate that doesn't do radio voice. Nice. So I kind of already had that built into my podcast. I don't, and I also, I just sort of thought it's easier to segue into the conversation when you don't have a hard start. Like, you know, people feel more at ease because they're already, Chatting. you know, and it's not like, you know, now promote. <laughs> Spotlight. <laughs> right. Yeah. Plug your film. Go. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, uh, so that would kind of have to switch gear. It's sort of a serious subject. I mean, you know, but um, with very at least the char the the subjects, your characters, your subjects are warm and uh, and and uh, well, I, maybe somewhat complicated in some cases, but you know, people you kind of really get a real true sense of, you know, and that's one of the successes of your documentary whether it's uh, Roger or Farana, and, did, and please correct me if I mispronounce somebody's name. Yeah, Farhana. Farhana, thank yeah. you. Uh, who are kind of like primary, I guess, subjects, right? And Roger's, Roger's daughter. Yeah, Savannah. Savannah, of course. Uh, so we're talking to, because I already kind of buried the lead here, uh, the co-director is Maya Kenworthy and Elena sanchez Belliot. Did I get that right? You got it right. <laughs> the night it's the opening night film of the Human Rights Watch Film Festival in New York on May twentieth, and you're both going to be there at the Walter Reed Theater. Yeah, we are. the Lincoln Center. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah, it's amazing. I can't believe it. I keep looking at pictures of the Lincoln Center. It looks uh, very <laughs> fancy, you, and yeah. very big. Have you? You haven't been there before. No, we've neither. Neither of us have been. Oh, really? Oh, so you're in yeah. for a treat. And it's yeah. the perfect time of year. It'll be a fun trip for you. Yeah, we're very excited. We haven't, I, I keep saying to everyone that interviews us that we haven't had a single party for this film because it came out during like one of the many lockdowns and a lot of festivals we had to do over Zoom and things like that. So we're very excited to like go out in New York. Yeah, well, that that is nice. So the whole, <laughs> your whole vibe is is very um, up for this this particular like, screening yeah. right yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for those of course out there who can't get to new york there is a di digital option or a streaming option so people can go to the human rights watch film festival website and google the uh, rebellion which is the name of the documentary and it's about the group extinction rebellion uh which i was happy to learn about um and um i, I i'm i can relate because i think right now there's and th and there's other things going on in your film other topics of uh, that are really right now so germane, but the I, I relate as an American and what's going on here because there's a a sense of frustration with uh, 
that, that our democracy, our, our own democracy here is it's, it's so in such a fragile state. And mm -hmm. this, there seems to be a lot of civility and awareness to the dangers behind it, but the, re the response isn't, doesn't feel strong enough to many of us. Yeah, there's a lot of talk and then not a lot of the right action continuing down the same path. I think, yeah, in the US, like in the UK, it's, it's now a moment where our leaders are talking about opening up new sites, just committing even more to the fossil fuel industry and yeah, put, putting them before everyone else. It's just mad. It's very, very frustrating. And I think, you know, our film is largely reached in 2019, um, which uh, was a time when a lot of people, certainly in the UK, weren't really talking about climate change or thinking about it. Um, you know, a lot of people in that part of the world are lucky not to be right now experiencing the worst sides of it. Um, and I think what was great about Extinction Rebellion, along with other groups like the Youth Strikers, was they really got that issue uh, up the political agenda and onto people's minds. And it's now you turn on the news and people are talking about it, you turn on the radio. Um, but I think then a few years on, people are at a point where they're like, okay, cool. So now there's no excuse really. Like we all do know about this. We are all talking about it, but what are we doing? And to see them that we're actually continuing to take steps in totally the wrong direction, that is quite frustrating and disheartening for people because you think, yeah, there's no, you can't claim ignorance anymore, anyone. Like we know what's going on. And of course the impacts of climate are becoming more and more and more apparent. You can't really pretend you don't see it because of course we all see it. Um, so yeah, it's a difficult time. But that's why we need more movements, more people, you know, getting active, <laughs> like not just burying our heads and staying isolated and alone with it, but actually, yeah, coming together. So I think part, that's partly why we wanted this film to come out now and to sort of excite people again around collective action, um, mm -hmm. especially after the pandemic too, when we've all been so apart. Right. Yeah. yeah and like you say, yeah. that's, it's a film, it's a film about climate, the climate crisis, but it's also very much a film about movement building and people coming together and the power of collective action. And, you know, that's why, you know, there's so many things going on in the US right now that need that, right. and, you know. Yep powers of collective action, but also the powers that are trying to staunch those, uh, that the collective, um, uh, you know, resistance and uh, protest and, and which your, which rebellion really illustrates, you know, effectively. I mean, and it's also up against the media. I mean, um, the media yeah. is often, um, as the film shows, you know, painting people as being too, as extremists or yeah. using terms like extremist or, you know, fun, I, I don't know, uh, there's probably plenty of other, uh, when it's really, it is uh, the other, it's the corporations, it's Shell, it's other corporations that are, are, are behaving in extreme. We're just yeah. kind of trying to neutralize things. Yeah, totally. yeah, I mean, that was one of the, oh, sorry. No, you go for it. Yeah, that was one of the big motivations to, to make the film was this kind of just like such reductive portrayals of activism and activists in mainstream media and how, I don't know, it's like they don't kind of realize how dangerous that is. And just, you know, yeah, we just kept seeing these portrayals of XR that had kind of no, um, we it, it, they just didn't correspond with what we were seeing on the inside. And, you know, we really wanted to kind of demystify and destigmatize the notion of activists and they're just like normal messy human beings who are really committed and you could also be one you know um because i think the other thing that the media does a lot even if they're not uh calling them extremists is, is painting people as either heroes or villains and that also isn't very helpful because if someone is a hero then you can't like aspire to be like them and if they're a villain then you don't agree with them the end result being that you don't do anything mm -hmm. and it's much more useful to see people as just these like messy flawed human beings that can affect change all humans that have ever affected change have been messy and flawed by virtue of being human mm -hmm. um, so let's you know kind of um yeah we wanted people to see themselves in them more yeah well and, done. Um, Go ahead, Maya. Sorry, we've also had in this country um, this police bill that's finally made its way through Parliament that is a direct response to groups like Extinction Rebellion and also Black Lives Matter because they've been so effective. They've held yeah. the powerful yeah. to account and they don't like that. And, you know, there's measures in this bill that are around protests being too noisy. Someone just a single person with a placard in Parliament Square could, you know, have a really heavy handed police response now. It's just ridiculous, like really draconian stuff and I think yeah we realize that some of these media narratives that are painting activists as dangerous are actually just lending themselves to 
that government narrative that like, yeah, these guys are trouble. We need to stifle them. We need to clamp down. And so we sort of thought like, actually, no, that's that's not that's not a road we want to stay on. And if we can help in some way, like remind people, like Elena says, that these are just other people trying their best who care and are not, you know, they're not the ones on the wrong side of history here. So um, that that was important to us. I mean, uh, another uh, and and a thousand over a thousand people are arrested through these um through this through the protests the demonstrations uh right within extinction rebellion yeah, or at least yeah. they were the catalyst yeah. this this organization right um and i don't remember i mean i'm kind of up date to date i think i mean i'm probably not like some other people that are probably far more uh hyper aware of the news coming out of england but i mean I didn't hear about that. And I also didn't wasn't familiar with Extinction Rebellion. So it's just like kind of a, another example uh, of 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 the choking of this inf- of this information. I hear plenty of st- other things, you know, um, but when it comes to things of this nature, I, I should know about that. Yeah, I mean, that's one of my biggest like frustrations with kind of mainstream media or the news cycles that I, I'm just always watching the news feeling so depressed about the world. Mm-hmm. And that's also very deliberate. It's like, why can't we hear about all of the good stuff that's going on, all the people that are stepping up? It's like, you know, because if you look for it, that is happening. And then you could feel inspired and join, you know, whoever you feel the most drawn right. to. Um, but I think, you know, it's 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 better to keep us apathetic and scared <laughs> yeah or, or, make, or make us angry because often we found the media would jump oh, right. on action like the you know you see in the film there's that tube station action that happens where activists climb onto a tube train in a particular part of london and it <clears throat> becomes violent it's not you know it was a really unpleasant day and that that got the most media attention out of anything and you know then that's used then sort of even though that was just a handful of people it was a, you know offshoot wasn't a main mm-hmm. xr led thing um that's what then everyone remembers because the media's jumped on it and it, they, they know that i guess people are going to want to hear about that and click on it and and that side of it also is not not good i know i feel almost crippled when i'm or paralyzed is a better way of saying it when i'm really angry and i'm angry a lot so i'm really trying to minimize how i have to kind of compartmentalize better because and then you feel helpless and so you don't you don't know how to react so it's you're right i mean i think uh people feeling fear or anger which are very close relations uh both leave people feeling very helpless and paralyzed you know um so um, I mean, if, if, the, if those protests in April 2019 showed anything was that, you know, people were waiting for someone to come along and be like, here's something that you can do. And, you know, that's what we were hearing people say to us all the time that we were filming. They were doing this for the first time in their lives and they had been, you know, shitting themselves for the last 30 years being like, what can I do? And then, you know, they're mm-hmm. like, OK, well, let's try this, you know. Um, and just so many people were showing up who had never done this before being like, OK. Let's give it a go. Um, we're talking to uh, co-directors of the new documentary, a new documentary called Rebellion, Maya Kenworthy and Elena sanchez Belliot, who uh, the film is going to have its uh, New York premiere, at least. May, is this the U.S. premiere, too? Uh, I, yes, that is the US, U.S. premiere. Thank you. At uh, on Friday, May 20th, at the opening night, prestigiously of the Human Rights Watch Film Festival. Uh, They will both be uh, in person there to take your questions and comments and to meet you and chat about such, I don't know, uh, you know, casual things as uh, the end of our, (laughs) the the environment, democracy. Shall we lighten the mood? (laughs) Yeah. Um, And, you know, but on the other side of things, uh, you were also filmmakers. Let's not forget, you're not just telling a political story or a, you know, a social commentary, but you're also telling a story about people. Um, and so you have to make Roger um, Hallam, yes. Hallam, Hallam and uh, Farhana Yamin and, and Savannah, is it Savannah? Did I just? Savannah. Savannah. Yeah. Savannah uh, and to realize characters that people can relate to, whether whatever their, your position is. Um, so, you know, can you talk about that a little bit before? while we have a little time left about how to present these these complicated people. 
Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we, you know, that we found really compelling from the beginning was that, you know, there were people in XR that were challenging our assumptions or prejudices mm -hmm. about who would join an environmental activist group and, you know, Farhana top among them. Um, but also that, you know, they were so different and there were people like Farhana and Roger who are so different in many ways, kind of, you know, having to work it out in a room and, and that felt like a really good story and that felt like what we should all be doing more of uh -huh. um but yeah i think to answer your question about characters and, and you know or contributors it is always difficult when you're making a documentary and you're trying to fit real life into a you know a story arc um so that took a, a lot of um thinking <laughs> yeah um and and yeah and and kind of like obviously you need to make a story out of it but we wanted to we didn't want to fabricate anything you know and, and we wanted to be honest and so yeah yeah and i think also we kind of we realized that with certain figures especially like a co-founder like roger who was very high profile and was often right. being written about and people had a lot of strong opinions about him and it hadn't met him before they just you know had seen something or heard something and um you know and sometimes we had quite strong opinions about Roger but I think because we had a relationship with him we knew him you know we we were we were always reminded that like Roger's a person who you know ha very has a very funny sense of humor and can be a bit awkward and vulnerable himself and you know also has humility a lot of the people in the group have a lot of humility and I think that's one of those common stereotypes around activists is that they're like really self-righteous and they think they know best and they're just, mm -hmm. you know, really unbearable to be around. And actually we didn't find that. We found that when we were in a room with a lot of the people in the group, it's like, these are people we're having a laugh with. It's fun to be with them. And there is humility. There is an understanding that like not getting everything wrong and not, sorry, not getting everything right and needing to sort of, yeah, keep trying to do better. And so that also, we felt that was important to like, yeah, show that side of things a bit and just, yeah, bring, bring people into, who they are that the whole the, the fuller picture of them rather than just like oh that's this anarchist that believes this or you know that's just the, they're just difficult in this way and yeah it, it, it's important to keep remembering it's more nuanced than that it's more complicated and like to be a bit less judgy and hard on people um yeah keep, and also we just found ourselves pulled in so many different directions that it's not it's and that was what, what it was fascinating about being in part of the group and following it closely is like yeah you find yourself one minute with one person being like yes I totally get that and then with another being like oh this is a different view and but I also get this and you're just so constantly being you know challenged and, and made to see things in different ways and actually that's really healthy too so we hope that the film does that a bit for the audience is like take you in these different directions so that you can see oh, actually lots of people even though they're coming at this differently you know they have valid things to say and experiences and ideas and like we need to listen to each other more keep listening keep listening and learning and not just deciding how someone is and that's it and writing them off um. um well i hope that people go check it out and then i hope it has a also a, a broader distribution here in the states um yeah, that later would be good. i don't know if you're working on that i imagine you are yeah <laughs> um, what's that yeah we are working uh, on it. we'll keep you we'll keep you updated Okay, I will uh, remain updated. Uh, thank you, Maya and Elena, uh, very much. And enjoy your trip to Lincoln Center, to New York City. Have fun. Yeah, and... I'm really looking forward to New York in the springtime. I feel like it's the best yeah. time to be there. It'll, oh, it's going to be lovely there, and you'll meet yeah. lots of great people and have a great time, I'm sure. It's a fun town, you know, still, believe it or not, you know. <laughs> All righty. Thank you so much. Thanks, and, Adam. Thanks, thanks, Adam. I look forward to seeing you guys again sometime. Yeah, yeah, are you going to come down or no? Uh, probably, I'm working full time. It's a little difficult, oh, and okay. and yeah, yeah. Um, but well, well, thank, you, thank you for watching it, and thank you for. Oh, my pleasure. Time. Yeah, thank you. No have worries. a good day or have a good evening, day. I guess. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> bye. 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 bye.